And there's the Supreme Court. This is some images from yesterday where the court historic decision upheld the White House's Affordable Care Act. That is the law of the land now. Extends health care, the opportunity to buy health care to tens of millions of people. However, while it extends the opportunity to buy it, it doesn't necessarily make it cheaper, which leaves you in a quandary. Say you, uh, say you have to come down to a decision between your income and your health care. Which would you make? It's not one that you often ask. Chuck Jaffe's asking it, though. Market watches Chuck Jaffe. He's going to answer it for us, too. Chuck, how are you today? I'm doing well, Paul. I'm doing well. Uh, so you're right. In your column, you point out that that is not a question people often ask themselves, whether you want no. to pay for health care or whether you want an income. But well, it's one maybe you fact, should. In fact, what you should be asking is, which would be worse, the right. loss of my right. income or the loss of health care? Because they're both catastrophic events. It's not like anybody's going, oh, man, let me take these choices. And worse yet, the, the basic options you've got if you lose either one, over time, you know, become pretty uncomfortable. You're moving back in with family or you're relying on somebody you know to help you or you're selling your real estate. There's a lot of things in here that are bad. And while folks want to believe that, OK, with the Supreme Court decision yesterday, it's all set, you're going to have health care. You're not. It's, it's still going to be costly. There's still going to be you making the decision and how you make it, especially when we get to 2014. But even now is a really important deal. Right. I think that's something that, you know, certainly for most people who work, they don't even, even if you go from job to job, you don't really often think about health care as a cost to you. I know it comes out of our salary. I'm not dumb. But I mean, like, you don't think of it as a cost to you. But you're talking about people who actually, who either are retired, not working, whatever, who do have to make that decision. Actually think about buying health care. Well, not only as think about buying health care, but then extend that and look at long-term care insurance right. and disability insurance because... Your employer may cover your health care, but they don't necessarily cover your disability and everything else. And then there's this whole group of people that functionally believe that they must work to age 65 because that's when Medicare and Medicaid really kick in. So they couldn't leave earlier. Well, as much as our mortality is going up and our life expectancy is going up, the fact is there are plenty of people who, for the good of their own lives, would be far better off if they retired earlier and, and got to do something besides work for the time that they're given. So you have to be thinking about this in a lot of ways. And the real issue is it's very much like thinking about the stock market. In the stock market, we have all the day-to-day -day noise. What am I doing? What do I want to do with this or that? And any little loss might hurt us. But the fact is what's important is the long-term trend. In this decision, the loss of your income on a day-to-day -day basis would be devastating. But if you ever had any sort of critical illness, the loss of your health care will wipe you out. So you can't be either or. And by the way, while the new law guarantees you health care, it also sets the price point because fundamentally you're going to be fined if you don't have health care. And some people will say, OK, I could pay a couple hundred bucks or a couple thousand if I'm married with a family, et cetera, or I could pay more thousands to have health care. I'm better off paying the IRS and and not doing this.